And welcome everybody back to Plain Talk here on the White Pages. Uh, this is episode 25 on July 7th, uh, to, uh, uh, July 7th, 2021, uh, 8.21 in the evening, a little bit later than usual, um, for good reason. Uh, 7771 is my mom's birthday. She turned 50 today. Everybody please wish her a very happy birthday. Um, once again, joined by my good friend Matthew. Thanks for having me back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, months and months and months and months and months ago, on one of these shows, we um, we got talking about um, boy, I forget what I I, I mean. This was oh, yeah, this must have been like March, um, and the topic of uh, you know the the the, the concept of imagination uh, turned up. Um, and I said, you know, I am actually looking into trying to get some people to come on the show to talk about that, do some interviews. That never actually ended up happening, obviously. Um, but everybody got really excited about it. And so for the last couple months, I have been planning and plotting and uh, trying to get uh, a couple of uh, a series of topics that I would be happy with um, to uh, talk about this concept of uh, imagination. You know, we've been sort of plugging it here and there. Uh, since then, and tonight we are uh, starting that finally. We are going to be uh, diving into um, the very heart of what, um, as far as I'm concerned, is what makes uh, people people. Um, you know, there I, I, I don't think there's any more human thing than the power of imagination, uh, and so I'm uh, very excited to dive into this new series. Um, I thought it was important that um, we start with you know some of the underlying philosophy of all of it uh and i uh i felt that aesthetics is probably the best place for us to do that you know aesthetics is a branch of metaphysics it deals with the concepts of uh, uh taste the ideas of delight and disgust pleasure and pain you know it's the things that we perceive um from our unique perspective uh, i've had hal on uh, whenever he's been on, he rants and raves about how aesthetics is the only branch of philosophy that's worth a damn. Um, so we talked about it a little bit before. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, that's where we find ourselves this um, lovely uh, July evening. Uh, and so, um, that out of the we're way. Uh, Sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, we already have... Um... I need something to talk about. Why do you put aesthetics under metaphysics? I've never heard anybody do that. I am of the opinion that what it is that we like and dislike, to boil it down to as, as basic as possible, is something that is about as... I, I think that's about as existential a question as you can get. Um, and so I think it has to fall under metaphysics. Um, I guess I don't understand what um, what existential means in that context. We are dealing with... Okay, let's... I mean, let's, 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 let's back it up here for a second. Um, we have talked before about how you might come to your beliefs. You know, we've talked about belief. We did a whole episode on belief. Then two, actually. Um, you know, and we, we, we frequently say that you can't choose your beliefs. That they are things that come to you. Um, I, I don't think there's anything more... Um, when, I, when I use the word existential, I mean it in the sense of something which is above and beyond mundane understanding you know I've, I've introduced the concept before and we've talked about it about um, you know uh, relative free will you know that there is no existential free will in the in the broad sense but like go ahead and try not to pick your shirt this morning you know um, and so when I talk about things which are existential I mean things which exist outside of this day-to-day uh, -day mundane realm um, and I I, 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 you know, I guess I just, I really feel this. I feel that that which you like or dislike, that which you find pleasurable or painful or beautiful or disgusting is 
something which can exist only in this greater than thyself space. Um, it is. It is a because it's it's you know because it's more than just a simple decision. It's the it's the the reason why you make your decisions. You know, um, and so that feels existential, and then that you know that's that's metaphysics is the way I see it. That's fine. I'm just curious. I'm yeah, I, I'm stealing from twenty year old the classes where you know i had one professor really so i'm really taking one man's interpretation of things so i'm, I'm certainly not the last word on anything philosophy but I, I have always broken down philosophy into five categories and aesthetics being one of them but i've always been on this kick where aesthetics is sort of the least understood most mysterious mm. but in some ways there are a bunch of different ways to look at the other categories and lump them under aesthetics mm -hmm. um maybe not metaphysics um and maybe the epistemology one is an iffy one but ethics and logic to me sometimes feel very heavily um that that they're an illusion that uh, really is just a question of aesthetics well, and I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm on the show and off the show. I've talked to Hal about this at great length. Um, you know, that the, the personal nature of aesthetics makes it the only, at least as far as he's concerned, makes it the only one for which you can say anything really concrete about, despite the fact that it exists in this very weird, amorphous place that's so hard to pin down. Um, but, you know, I, again, because it's so personal, like, none of the none of the others are as 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 deliberately personal as aesthetics you know aesthetics is about <laughs> your taste what it, what is disgusting to you what is pleasurable to you um you know and uh and I, again i i very much agree with you that like metaphysics is is not one that falls as easily under us and as far as as far as i'm concerned like you you did actually more or less lay out my my three like if i had to if i had to really shrink all the philosophy down into some easily identifiable groups um it would probably end up as um metaphysics epistemology and um actually it might just be those two i think it's like i think it's metaphysics and uh, or yeah metaphysics and epistemology i think those are probably the only two that i i, I think I, I sum them up into um, i think your definition works really well if you give preference to the idea of idealism to the idea that the mind is what is what is real rather than the physical um your thing i think your thing works well but if it if we don't give that preference i think there might be some interesting places to doubt involving evolution and the complexity of our evolved brain chemistry well, sure, but I I think even I think even in the in in the physical space, like let's let's take um let's take an easy one actually, um let's take the fear of snakes, and spiders. Lots of people are afraid of snakes and spiders. It's a really common fear, and it's a fear that is shared by our you know our closest common ancestor, the chimpanzee. You know, it is it is a present evolutionary terror. And we're afraid of these things because these things in the wild will fucking murder us, you know, in, in 10 seconds flat. Um, we so, have a sense of taste. We like the taste of fat and sugar. And yeah. there are things that are poisonous that taste nasty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's some, there's some very obvious evolutionary ones. But, but some people love snakes. I think snakes are great. Some people, uh, also like myself, uh, are not really big into sugar. I prefer spices and things which are objectively poisons, you know? Um, I'm afraid of dogs because I was bitten by one when I was very young. So there are ways to get your fears otherwise as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and, and so, you know, it, 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 it can start very simple. You know, you, you point at a very... And that's why, that's why I brought up snakes, right? Like, that's a very obvious one to track evolutionarily. Um, and yet, there are still variations in that, and and why the variations matter is because the variations, um, at least from my 
you know, my, my layman's understanding of evolutionary biology, um, get very complicated very fast. Um, and so I think from a, uh, it's the idealists and, and I don't want to call them the physicalists because I don't think that's right. Materialists. The, the materialists. Materialists, thank you. Materialists, um, yep. <laughs> I'm always thinking of those the brain guys and the people who think everything's real. That's my that's that's my in <laughs> the atom guys and the mind guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, from a materialist perspective, if you reinterpret the branches of philosophy from a materialist perspective, I would put metaphysics um, in the. I, I, let me let me rephrase that. I would put evolutionary biology into metaphysics um, because these are questions of an existential nature. They are questions of. How did we get like this? Why are we like this? What are the reasons why we do X, Y, and Z? Um, you know, and there are there are physical answers to why that might be. Um, if if you if you choose to to take a materialist approach to things, now we've talked about this, you know, ad nauseum as well. You know, uh, you are a committed idealist, and I. You know, I think there's probably some nice middle ground between the two, but certainly, I, you know, if, if I really have to choose one, it wouldn't be the materialists. Um, just because I think it's... Yeah, I may be taking too literal uh, an, a, an interpretation of metaphysics. Like, if there's a physical explanation, it's physics, not metaphysics. But yeah, it's that's not so cut and dry. I know. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to think of more historically about it than you Probably well, correct. it's because again, it's because you're a committed idealist, and 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 I'm, I like to I I I would like to hope there's something in between. Um, yeah, for a materialist, there is no metaphysics. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, which you know is ridiculous, but <laughs> yeah. Which is which is why if I had to pick one, I'd pick idealist, just because I, I there's some things in the materialist camp that I just, I find utterly ridiculous. And there are things in the, in the idealist, in the materialist camp that I find ridiculous and, and the, in the idealist camp, like I can kind of like stomach some of the stuff that I think is a little weird, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, but you know, um, does that, does that satisfy you know, what you were? Um, it fascinates me to oh, no okay. end. Uh, I think that's a, I think it's a question that will require a great deal of thought and, and, uh, and pondering on my part, maybe years, but <laughs> it was cool. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> if I think of another question or, um, or a conundrum regarding it, I'll, I'll let you know for sure. Certainly. Um, yeah. So that, after that, a little, a little bit of preliminaries that does bring us, um, squarely into aesthetics. Um, did you, uh, I don't know. Do you have anything prepared to start us off with? Uh, so, um, well, like I said, it was one of my five things. And I was trying to create like a poster for my philosophy class. And so I tried to break down, um, each of the five categories into like one cutesy little statement. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so logic is what is reasonable ethics. What is right? epistemology what is uh i don't think i could ever came up with a really good one for that but like what what can you know i think is what i came up with but it, it didn't quite fit the cadence of the other ones sadly mm -hmm. metaphysics what is real uh, but aesthetics was what i came up with and i searched for an r word for probably a month but never came up with one uh what is preferable mm. is what i came up with yeah That's do you good. prefer or, or not prefer right mm -hmm. So that ca that f takes the taste category, like literally, or clothing, or art, or beauty, or you have you have this preference, which seems, um, at least on our in the same way that free will is at the level of you can't comprehend the dis if there's a if there's a calculation that your brain is doing, it's all it's so complex and so below the surface that you can't you have no access to that calculation. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm. Um, and for us, maybe it's you have no access to the evolutionary biology that has, has arisen. You do not know why you like uh, broccoli and your brother doesn't mm -hmm. like there's it's unexplainable from from our realm of things. You just have a preference. Well, and starting from that, I mean, let's take that broccoli example, right? Um, Everyone and their mother is familiar with Sigmund Freud, um, and uh, I think I've, I think I've talked about it on one of the shows at one point. But I have a, um, I think I'm rather infamous among my friend circles for uh, having a 
somewhat disparaging view of the brain sciences. Um, and not because oh. I think that they're... Not because I don't think it's worth pursuing, but I think that in their current state, they are given way too much credence. Because um, they're just too fucking new, you know? Yeah. What they're doing is way more complex than what their results... Yes. Yes, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. justify. Gotcha. Yeah, it's just, it's, it is, this is too complex a subject, and I'm, I'm very, I, co- go ahead. I've watched some YouTube videos by neurophysicists, neuroscientists, like, explaining why they agree with you on this, so it's not totally wild territory. N- no, yeah, and I, you know, there are, there are, there are, uh, there are a few that I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with, uh, who, uh, you know, like, I, like, I don't come out of this just out of fucking left field, but. Um, you know, I, I bring up Freud um, because uh, Freud, you know, back in the early uh, 20th century, tried to provide some very oversimplified answers um, to these questions, and now Freud is, you know, fucking useless. You know, less than a, you know, barely less than a century later, um, because attempting to explain why you like broccoli and your brother doesn't it turns out is more complicated than oh i had one particularly good memory and he had a traumatic one you know like it's it's really complicated um yeah and the nature nurture thing i think they're both there mm -hmm. that's pretty hard to argue that they're not and then they can play any sort of combination of of contributing factor you know Mm -hmm. hard to hard to distinguish how much of which is is involved and so if you're dealing with something as multifaceted and, as, and as, as complicated as the brain, you better fucking take it seriously. You know, like you really better walk on eggshells because as I've, you know, as I've, as I've posited before, um, you know, we are, we are searching for meaning. Um, and if, somebody walks up and says, hey, the reason why you like broccoli is because of X, they're going to latch on to that because it's an answer to something which is, you know, what might drive them mad. Um, at dinner tonight, um, the question of favorite colors came up. Um, I, uh, uh, my favorite color is blue. Almost everything I own is blue, um, you know, followed by red and green, uh, and then and purple as well. Um, but like blue is the primary color of, of, of all of my clothing and my bed and you know parts of my car and you know like that's that's just the color I prefer I can't tell you why um, you know the the number of the number of possible answers for that is quite large um, and I all I know on a day-to-day basis and all I really can know is that if I see something blue in a star, in a star, the accent comes out for a second, uh, in a store, if I see something blue in a store, I'm going to go for that first. Um, yeah. Yep. Uh, very strong preference. Yeah, I have a I have a very strong preference. I have a, you know I have an overwhelming preference for this one color. So what I mean so what do we what do we do with that right like what does that what does that mean on a on a on a practical level? It means that I'm going to prefer blue stuffs. What does that mean on a existential level? I, I guess I prefer blue stuff. You know it, it's. Seems like a very circular and simple argument. Hey, cool, show's over. Um, but uh, this is a vitally important question if we are going to be discussing the topic of imagination, because so often that which we that which we that which we imagine and that which we choose to engage with in an imaginary sense is entirely determined by the things that we have already decided that we like, you know? Um, I like science fiction, but not all science fiction. I like fantasy, not all fantasy. I think Star Wars is the best thing ever. Um, 
and uh, Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets was one of the worst movies I've ever seen. You know? Um, and those two things are very, very similar uh, in a lot of ways. You know, it is it has often been joked that uh, Star Wars is the live-action uh, Valerian. Um, the, uh, I don't, have you ever read Valerian, the comic book? Um, somebody gave me digital copies of them all, so I've, I've read a few of them. I have them all, but I haven't gotten very far. They're... Meh. <laughs> I didn't realize they were that old. Yeah, 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 yeah. They predate Star Wars. I mean, his ship looks almost identical to the Millennium Falcon. You know, and and there are certainly a lot of similarities between the two things. Um, and certainly those movies are written in a very sort of similar style with similar sorts of, of, of overtones. Um, but, you know... Uh, Larian the City of a Thousand Planets was awful, and Star Wars 1977 still captures me with magic, you know, 15-something years later since I've seen it, and, you know, well over 40 years since the damn thing came out. Um, and so again, if we're going to try and talk about this subject, we need to try and get maybe not maybe not a, a an answer but at least a framework for how we end up liking the things that we like and I, I brought up the Freud stuff and I brought up the you know the the, the, the brain science stuff um, just to really impress the enormity of the task at hand <laughs> um, you know these are not simple questions and they should be treated with extreme care because we are discussing the as I mentioned at the top of the show foundational element that makes us human so what do you think about so, that? <laughs> so my thoughts on the subject and really just involve the overlay in the other the other topics of philosophy like not every human being enjoys the taste of uh, sweet things right sugary mm -hmm. things but the vast majority do for good biological reason mm -hmm. right like it's high calorie and that's survival mm -hmm. for the old humans, right? Um, I was thinking about logic, right? What comes up with logic is there are logical arguments that seem reasonable to the vast majority of people, but in the end, the rules of logic are something that we have chosen and that not necessarily everybody agrees with. Mm -hmm. It's possible that what seems logical is actually just a strong preference. Mm -hmm. It's just maybe one that is a little more universal or semi-universal, nigh-universal, and so it feels like it's something um, more than preference. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's not guaranteed from what I have seen and studied for that to be so. Say We, get, we run into this with ethics a lot. This is really where it came up for me. My students were very much into the idea that ethics was subjective. Mm -hmm. What was right and wrong was up to you and you alone. And that makes it aesthetics, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. If it is not universal in some way, then it's aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Right? That it's it's a personal preference. There is no right and wrong. It's just whatever, you, whatever your preference is. Whatever your personal taste is. Um... So cool. So now it starts to get a little murkier. Epistemology, what what do you know to be true is really what epistemology is, right? What can you know for certain? Mm -hmm. What can you feel certain about? Um, you know, it's because because there's there isn't any certainty. There's more like conviction, right? Once mm -hmm. we get down to it, and so if you are convinced of something that it is true, uh, you have you have made some choice there you have made some preference like that this answer seems more plausible than that answer in some way feels like it might be aesthetics mm -hmm. right might be <clears throat> i certainly don't have a full answer to this sorry losing my voice I'm getting sorry. a cough drop <clears throat> all right um the metaphysics is the tougher one um, but for me, it kind of still boils down to uh, aesthetics because I'm choosing idealism over materialism as my fundamental basis for my <laughs> metaphysics because I have a strong preference for it. I do not have a certainty about that. Mm -hmm. Right? Right, right. And, and that is a that is a preference. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, now what I believe below that feels more like logic. Um, but, again, maybe that's aesthetics too. Well, I mean, if that's all true, then Hal wins. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that it's true. It's just something that, that tickles me when I start thinking about, all right, right, let's. how can I talk about aesthetics? Mm -hmm. I know the other ones really well. I have a lot to say about the other ones. But let's assume that aesthetics is its entire, is separate from those things, or that we even just choose to make it a separate category. How do we talk about what the philosophy of what is beautiful? Mm. Well... What let's, makes us feel good? Let's start with ethics in regards to aesthetics. Your students are very, you know, and I know some of those students, they are, you know, they're very prone to um, say that uh, ethical questions are, are personal rather than, you know, existential and broad. Um, Is there perhaps such a thing as that which is preferential to a group? If oh, do a... they become... Are they only a group because they agree on what they prefer? Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, no, but we could take like a, maybe a group of islanders, right? Sure. They're not on that island because of their preference. They were born there, right? Yeah. And then they might prefer a food that they grew up with. Well, you know, or I mean, type of music, even like different different cultures have different musical tastes. Let's uh, you know, like, like like taking that you know that that the group analogy, right? Uh, let's um, let's use an easy one. Um, murder is bad, so says the group. Now there are quite a few outliers in this uh, in this in this 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 sort of situation. You know, murderers do exist. And there are people who defend certain types of murder as, as as murder being separate from killing, for example. You know. We have laws about it. You know, we have murder one, murder two, manslaughter, etc, etc, etc. So within our 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 broad society agrees on an ethic. You know, we we have the group preference that murder is bad. But as you break it down, the individual tastes begin to take over. Democratic aesthetics. I like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, and so that is, um, what is my point? There's certainly a lot of peer pressure in ethics, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people start smoking, not because it it's enjoyable uh, maybe nobody starts smoking because it's enjoyable right <laughs> you get addicted because you're trying to look cool <laughs> i mean pure tobacco had to be enjoyable i guess well, and maybe yeah maybe they just tried it and got addicted right have you ever um have you ever uh, part partook in tobacco my brother gave me a cigarette when i was six years old <laughs> and it was miserable and so i just ended up like blowing on the cigarette to make it look like i was smoking it <laughs> like you know blowing through the filter uh and never did it again because it was nasty yeah um you know that um i mean you know that that, that tobacco was a high right I did not know that actually. Yeah, it must yeah. not have been a high for me. I maybe I only I only tried one puff, so like, maybe that wasn't enough for my six year old self. You know, the, the reason why people smoke tobacco is because tobacco gets you high. Um, it's highly addictive, um, and so you end up you know becoming trapped in it. But people start smoking tobacco because tobacco does actually get you high. Not as high as marijuana, um, but you know it's a it's a lot more of a controlled experience. People, are people informed of this before they try it? Oh, I mean, I, I don't know anyone personally who's been informed of that before they try it. Everybody I know who's now addicted to cigarettes did it because they thought it was cool. Um, but certainly, I'm sure at some point someone was like, hey man, this will get you high. And, you know, they started smoking that way. Um, Just so you know, I'm not on a high horse here. Uh, I'm addicted to caffeine, so no judgment from me you smokers in the audience yeah i mean i um i i've said famously twice now uh, tonight but 
I do very famously get irritated whenever the, um, because a lot of advertising in this state is put into non-spoken campaigns, and I'm like, we got bigger fucking problems, man. <laughs> People want to worry about lung cancer in 40 years, that's their fucking problem. I... Irritates the hell out of me, but... My grandmother is 90, still smoking. Mm-hmm. That's well, anecdotal evidence, obviously, but I mean, bit of a crapshoot. Some people got the genes for it. Some people don't. I don't smoke. I'm not advocating smoking, but you know, also, if you're gonna pick a drug, like, if it's not gonna be cannabis, I guess pick tobacco. You know, like, that's yes, probably... because I don't in think I enjoy it. I don't spend money on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I have no interest, so I don't spend money on it. Um, and we can point to the reason why you don't, right? You know, we, at least on the surface, we can go, oh, you had a bad experience when you were six and you just decided that it was bad and you moved on. But you never knew that it got you. And maybe when you were six, maybe you got a little high and just didn't know it because it's been so many years. But, you know, let's assume it didn't, right? That obviously would play a role in your interaction with the thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm with you. And then it becomes a question of, you know, well, well why do certain substances elicit certain responses out of people? Um, me, for example, I have a very different high um, from marijuana um, than most of my friends, you know? Um, for most people I know, marijuana chills them out. For me, I lose my fucking mind. Um, you know, I really, I really get hyperactive, um, and so it has, it has made it not tip, uh, not typically a very pleasurable, uh, pleasurable experience for me because it just it wears me the fuck out. Um, you know, and the reasons for why that are are probably some kind of bi biochemical. Um, but there might, you know, there might be some underlying um, you know, psychological stimuli from when I was younger. You know, there's, there's, there's lots of reasons why that, that could be the case. Um, so but if those the things are just random <clears throat> combinations of biology and experience where's how can we have a theory about aesthetics how can we how can we use the category of aesthetics to understand anything about our existence well that's the weird part about aesthetics right you know i can kind of talk about these things you know and it's it's important that we do talk about these things before we dive too deeply into the esoteric side of it. Because they seem to be on the surface to be fairly logical answers. You know, and, and, and earlier on when I, I, I you know I, I made the case that, you know, you can there are there are versions of, of all of these philosophies that you can take up in a materialist mindset. Um, but there is there's this so when I um, would spend time with my sister, when I do spend time with my sister, sometimes we get ourselves into logic puzzles. Um, she is, uh, she's just better at math than I am. Um, but, you know, uh, I am, I am a, I am a practitioner of the, you know, of the branch of, of the branch of philosophy that's logic. You know, logic is something that I, I engage in frequently. It's what we do on this show. You know, we are logical philosophers. Um, my aunt had shown us a magic trick with cards and we sat down one day and we basically just tried to figure out what the, you know, how the card trick worked. She worked out all the math. She found all the different reasons why X, Y, and Z, you know, would work out how you'd get, you know, a certain result if you did an X, Y, and Z, you know, like, you know, she figured out the mechanics of the magic. And when she had finished, I kept asking her like, well, but why does this work? 
And it stumped her for a while because, as far as she is, she, as far as she was concerned, she'd found the answer. She'd found the mechanics of the thing. Certainly, that would be the why. But the why is why when you do this, do people go, "Wow"? Yes. Yeah. Why? Where's the wonder involved? Yeah. Where? Where's this other quality? You know, I can tell why you don't really like cigarettes you know we can we can you know we can build an answer out we can find out you know if you have a certain gene coded for for getting high off tobacco i can figure out the genes get me coded off marijuana certain life experiences you know like we can figure out the details of that that doesn't really explain the why of the 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 broader amazement or horror or delight or disgust or you know like we have words for these things you know these things we call emotions um you know i i mentioned you know earlier my my my, my frustration with brain sciences because they are dealing in the most complicated machine on the fucking planet um and a lot of that comes from this dry and you know this this is this is ch this has changed even in the last fucking 10 years you know but when i was 13 14 um there was this push among people that i knew in the media uh in 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 in, in a lot of the you know the research that i had you know that was coming out that would be presented with um which sought to reduce everything like emotion down to simply a neurochemical process you know i feel happy because a chemical is pulsing you know oxytocin is pulsing through my brain with some serotonin and it makes me feel great right serotonin yeah there's you a know? big player but that's the how that's the how that's the thing that's the physical interaction that's doing the thing the feeling of happy. This, yeah, it passes the buck. Yes, why, exactly. Why does the serotonin feel good? Why <laughs> right? does serotonin feel good? What is this thing that's good? Yeah. What is It changed that? your brain chemistry. It changed the configuration of your neurochemical pathways into something that you, the real you, the mind that watches, prefers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. yeah. And How does this the ghost in the machine have a preference? Yeah. Well, and that's and that's you know you asked me how do we talk about aesthetics? This is how we talk about aesthetics. It's the why. It's not the how. We know what the how is. You know, I, we're more or less there. There's plenty of more hows that are that are that are out there, and I will I will forever you know be shaking my fist at the brain sciences until they sort of. And, you know, more of them are, you know, are, are <laughs> starting to wise up to the fact that, like, maybe the hows are not the whys, and there's some, a pretty big fucking distinction there. Um, and so that is our, that is our challenge when discussing aesthetics. We're not talking the how. I know how I like the color blue. I don't know why. I don't know why I look at that, you know, uh, collection of light rays and go, hmm, well, that makes me feel happy. Why do I like? Why do I feel happy? What is the co you know the the substance of happy? What is the substance of, of sad? Why am I sad when there's no blue? Right? You know these let's, very. Let's... It, I came up with two good thoughts. Excellent. Um, one of them is is a re rewind, so I'm going to do that one first. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, well, let me just make a note to myself for uh, the other thing. Or I'll forget it. Okay. Um, I thought of a reason why at least understanding whether or not all of the other philosophy groups fall under its aesthetics might be useful. Mm -hmm. Like if, if it is true that um, preference sort of dominates mm -hmm. these other things, our culture and our choices and our ethics and our, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a very good argument against, the anti-tribal or the it's a very good argument against the tribalism that dominates our society mm. our planet mm. like like to be to hate somebody because they prefer men over women 
doesn't make any sense. It makes no more sense than pref- hating someone for preferring broccoli over lima beans. Mm, mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, I, you know, I, I actually, I would tend to agree with you. Um, and I think that... <laughs> I, I think, I think, uh, I think, I think, you know, I don't, I don't want to say begrudgingly because I guess I, you know, I really never considered it until until Hal yelled at me about it one night. I say yelled because when he get, not like he was like mad at me. But Hal, get, you know, when he gets really you know, passionate, you know, he just gets yeah, loud, yeah. you know, and he like he really got. He off. turns Italian. Yeah, 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 he really turns Italian, <laughs> you know, and he he just went off so hard on this idea, you know, that ultimately everything is personal preference. It's all aesthetics at the end of, you know, at the end of the day. Um, you know, and I had never really, I just never considered that before. Um, and so you, I think you bringing that up, um, you know. I, I don't want to go full how because <clears throat> in some ways I don't want that to be true because then we can't even have one big tribe. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I would like for us to have one, as a personal preference, one, some things that hold us together as one human tribe. So that we can love and care for each other, you know. I'd like to have some universal things. Well, and you know, to, to, to you know, to, to jump back to my, you know, my, my proposition of the um, the preference of the group, right? You know, I think I think it's possible to create group preference um, for certain yeah, even, things. Even just from an evolutionary standpoint, there's probably plenty of things that we all enjoy yeah yeah, yeah. and I, you know i think i think the more that you meld those preferences the larger and larger your group fr- preference can become um just as a as an off-the-cuff potential potential solution to to that um but i i also am not going full how into this you know once again because i you know cards on the table i think metaphysics is the one true branch of philosophy um you know i think it's i think i think i think that and then maybe epistemology is it's is it's like little brother but you know aesthetics is is a way of i think aesthetics is 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 the maximum way of explaining a lot of a lot of these these concepts Ah, this gets me to my second point actually beautifully so let's reduce everything and i like to do this to experience yeah Mm -hmm. whether you're an idealist or a materialist what you know is what you experience, mm-hmm. right? <clears throat> you don't know whether a unicorn is real or not. You you just know you've never ex- experienced one in the same way that you experience a horse, right? Mm-hmm. There's this idea of tangible experiences versus imaginary experiences or dream experiences. There are different types of experiences. Um, but that begs the question completely. It seems to be a different topic of why are some experiences preferable to mm-hmm. others? Right. In whatever category they come, whether it be, yeah, like complex or simple um, series, some series of experiences are are preferable. Like I can play musical notes in the wrong order. It's the same micro experiences, but not the same macro experience. And one is preferable and one is not. It makes some sense. That's it. No, that makes that makes no, that makes plenty of sense. I was was, was getting into a. Uh, an example. Um, I had, um, you know, I've, I've had similar artistic influences um, with a lot of, you know, a lot of my friends. Um, you know, we, we have similar preferences for the types of things that we like to experience. You know, it's one of the ways that you become friends with someone, right? You find things in common. Aired experience. Yeah. But we differ wildly on a lot of these same same things. You know, it's it's the famous 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 disagreements between you know you know geeks and nerds over over certain over certain uh, certain qualities. Um, this take one for example. Um, in the the in our our, our our working on this play that we've been that we've been working on um, working on this play that we've been working on. <laughs> um, you know, uh, uh, the, the 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 version of, of Midsummer that I've been working on is is set in the '60s. And so we've been looking into a lot of Whoa. the yeah, we've been looking into a lot of the artistic influences of the '60s, such as Star Trek. I love Star Trek: The Original Series. I loved it when I was a kid. I love it now. I also love the Next Generation. 
I, I, I grew up with next gen just the same as I grew up with, with TOS. Uh, you know, yep. and I, I love all of that. You know, Star Trek is one of, Star Trek is one of my loves that I never get to talk about very much because Star Wars is the only you know thing I guess that is worth discussing ever. Um, <laughs> you know, says the greatest Star Wars fan on the planet, but I mean, come on. Guys. Oh, the Star Trek stuff is a little less mm, metaphysical, a little less you know uh, allegorical, I guess. Have right? you seen DS Nine? I mean. Whew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think DS9 is the best of the bunch, actually. Oh, yeah. But yeah, just because it has a beautiful arc. Mm, um, such a good show. But I, you know, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I disagree very heavily with Hal over TOS. Hal cannot seem to get into TOS as, as much as he's tried. He just doesn't get it. Um, you know, and I, I have other friends who, who like, have, have looked at, 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 at uh, the original series and, you know, said things like, oh, the acting is so bad. Oh, the stories are so cheesy. You know, and I, I look at the, the original series and I think, no, this is, like, yeah, I guess the effects are kind of dated, but the acting styles, I think, are very real and grounded. You know, everyone makes fun of Shatner, but Shatner really doesn't become Shatner until, like, partway through the third season, and then it's really more in the later movies. But even then, I think Shatner is sort of unfairly, I, I, I think he's unfairly maligned. You know, I, I think that Bill Shatner is kind of a ridiculous human being, and so we conflate Bill Shatner with, you know, his character of Captain Kirk. Um, but, you know, by and large, I, I've never... I, there are very few William Shatner performances that I've looked at and went, oh, so ridiculous. Like, I mostly look at Shatner and go, no, I actually kind of get why you've made the choices you made. You know, like, it's a, it's a clear style, and I don't think it's an invalid style, you know? And at the time, it was perfectly in mode with yeah. everything else going on yeah. yeah it only looks silly in hindsight the same way certain haircuts in the 70s do yeah it, you know it, it doesn't make the thing invalid it just it, it's a it's a it's a different yeah. style of performance bell bottoms were cool yeah yeah man. they were or everybody wouldn't have fucking worn them yeah you know they're just not anymore <laughs> it's and that's that's uh so there are simple experiences like the taste of sugar is a single molecule Right, mm -hmm. and we have a good evolutionary strength to that. Broccoli's more complex. There are a bunch of other molecules going on. Um, there are ex like how was it cooked, and there are memories that involve like somebody cooked it bad for you once, right? Mm -hmm. um, the the more complex an experience, the less it is shared. Mm -hmm. You and I both sit and watch Star Wars, even if we're in, in a giant screen and nobody talks, we do not have the same experience. Mm -hmm. Right. Just because we're seeing the same thing doesn't mean we're experiencing the same thing because we don't experience everything that we see. Mm -hmm. Right. And everything that we hear, we our brain creates a presentation for us of the incoming input. And that presentation is different for both of us. Mm -hmm. It is not it's a it's a nearly a shared experience, but it's not a shared experience, not in a not in a perfect way. Mm -hmm. And so so the fact that we have a different preference it's okay. Mm -hmm. It doesn't actually mean that we're different. It just means that we're getting a different experience. Right? Yes. Um, yes. And that, 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 that separation of the experience, you know, um, I think, I mean, I really, I think, I think one of the, you know, we're, we're sort of talking from our own personal experiences, uh, but I think one of the, the better, our asses, depending on how you want to phrase it. But yeah, I think <laughs> I think one of the better uh, I think one of the better examples of this is to say, you know, look at a pair of identical twins, right? Yep. You're always going to know which twin is which, despite the fact that you know they've had literally almost identical upbringings. You know, they were born at the same time, they'd have the same set of parents, they look exactly the same, and yet one of them comes out one way and the other one comes out the other way. You know, you never see a set of identical twins and, you know, you, you, at least from the twins that I've known, and I've, I've known a surprising amount of twins, um, you can always tell them apart in the end. You know, there's always one who develops one set of personal quirks and another who's that's, an, you know, like, I knew a set of twins in middle school. Um, one of them became, uh, one of them became a, a cheerleader and the other became an actor. You know, they had similar you know, uh, styles in that. Both of those are styles of performance, right? So they both obviously have some s commonalities. One of them came out one way and the other came out the other way. And that, 
minor variation in preference for, for one of the other leads to radically different 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 lifestyles for someone who is you know ostensibly the same um yeah and this issue of preference is really important just you know goes without saying but i i feel that preference is at the heart of it uh, I think I, I really do feel that it's at the heart of imagination on some level yeah this is a connection I haven't actually drawn yet um, and I'm assuming it will take some time throughout this discourse these series of uh, talks for me to finally get in line with you or figure out what you're well, you know what's going on. Well, and what's what's exciting for me about all of this um, is that I'm I'm what I'm really talking about, you know, over this series is the artistic process, right? You know, I'm yep. I am I am working out for myself why I work out things a certain way. Why do I prefer? Like, here's a here's a weird one. Why do I prefer to watch and read stories that don't have romances in them? But when I write, I only ever write romances. I was like, you need a psychologist for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's a... It's a strange sort of question, right? Where yeah. is you know where's the preference thing there? I prefer to imagine something a certain way when I'm directly engaging with it, and when I'm engaging with it from a distance, like with a film or a, or another piece of media, I prefer to not. I would rather not. There are these systems in your brain, like there are modes of being and thinking. Like when I'm driving. A whole set of, um, you know, pre-programmed things mm -hmm. turn on, right? When I am cooking or when I am eating or when I am walking or <clears throat> watching a movie, right? <clears throat> Depending on the type or reading a book. Like reading is this <clears throat> this whole mechanism in your brain. Uh, it's, uh... Sorry. Here go. It's this skill that... that you know, requires some interesting things to happen, right? So um, certain ex people will have different mechanisms, right? Mm -hmm. Different mechanisms that are connected to each other, different mechanisms that are tied to certain memories. And so, you know, a certain food might turn on a part of your brain that just doesn't jive with another part. Um, I think you aren't... You might be simple in that you are the watcher, you are the thing that sees, but your brain is not a simple thing. And the, what your brain does with experiences, so you have an experience that comes in, but those experiences trigger imaginations. Those imaginations are, are experiences of their own, um, as are the memories that get triggered, right? But, but Whoa, the... Hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. So I take experiences in, and, and, and I that, that generates that starts a chain reaction that generates both that both generates um, memories that are now represented to you mm -hmm. um, and imaginations that your brain presents to you I mean the former memories are things that I have experienced and taken in but that latter thing yeah you you see um, uh, a dog walking down the street with its owner and you imagine petting the dog you imagine um what it smells like you imagine you know from your memories your memories are the building blocks of these imaginations but you wonder what its name is and wonder if it's a a good boy or uh how old it is right you you imagine what it looks like when it was a puppy 
these are simple imaginations, perhaps not like a whole story, sure, but sure. I, I I think the you know when you let your imagination run wild, then you are purposefully re-stimulating. You know, you take something and you start poking it and letting your memories feed that experience, and then the experience of your memories becomes an experience that triggers more memories and more imaginations. But why am I doing that? Ah, uh, it's very you're not choosing to so you can get that free will shit out of the way <laughs> sure, um it's sure. it's fairly chaotic it's not random but it's so complex and so behind the scenes it's so subconscious that you can never know why why do you dream about monkeys one night and and a cafe the next well i guess we saw the folks we'll never know why all right pack it up we got it <laughs> i mean there there is a reason well, you can't you can't reduce you can't reduce a computer to you know a, a couple of lines of code. There's a lot going on there. Your brain is even more complex than that. You can use a computer, but you you, you don't understand it because you're not a computer engineer. Certainly, but. Maybe if we had a computer, an AI, not a not a real AI, but a you know, artificial general intelligence that was strong enough to do the calculations and simulate what's going on in your brain, maybe you could answer these questions. Maybe it could. So what you're telling me is that it's pointless. I'm telling you that the why is too complicated to reduce to a recipe. That doesn't mean you can't learn some things. You can't learn some things on the edges. You can learn how to use different programs. You can learn how to stimulate your imagination and how to feed it and how to to improve it and how to strengthen it or or turn its attention in other places. Um, but you can't master it. You can't control it, like in a in a complete sense. You will never. You know, you might tame that horse, but you will never be that horse, I guess. <laughs> so what does that leave us with? Um, wonder and hope and remembering that I might not know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> um, just my opinion. Not worth stopping because I, I feel certain about something. Um, no, I've never stopped because you felt certain about something. I think the key is to figure out what you want to do. What would you like to know about imagination? What, what would you like to... Why do you want to understand it? You must want to do something with it. Why do I want to understand it? A big part of your life. It's your god in some ways. Yeah, I mean, it's probably the closest I have to a god. You can worship it without understanding it. Just have faith, brother. No. <laughs> I'm fucking with you, obviously. <laughs> Incorrect. Never even as a joke. <laughs> faith is the death of reason, and the death of reason is the death of society. I love you talking monkeys for this. <laughs> you know, I, I brought this up with David the other night. You know, I sort of invited him on just to, you know, to hang out. Um, and then, you know, we got talking about the question of art. We sort of did a preliminary version of what we're going to do next week. Um, hearts, in, hearts in the chat for David. Hearts in the chat for David. Love David. He's going to be yeah. on three of the six episodes we're doing for this, uh, this nice. series. Um, this question of, you know, but it was this question of what is art. And I felt that I really needed to get some kind of framework for that before I even embarked on this journey. Um, That's our next week topic. I already have yeah. a note to myself for a, a clip from the kids in the hall I need to get. But go ahead. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. That's our that's our next week's topic. We're gonna we're gonna really hit that. Um, yeah, we were, we were a little more chill last time. We're really gonna try to like drill into it um, next week. Um, and. I had an answer not an answer but i had a i had a good reference point and that good reference point is what sort of led me to to to, to bill out the series as i have it you know 
plotted out over the uh, the course of these episodes. I'm trying to remember what it was because it was important. Maybe look at the list. Because it's gonna be because it's important to to why I. You want me to read it? Uh, yeah. Go ahead and go ahead and read it out. One is aesthetics tonight. Mm -hmm. What is art? Where do ideas come from? Reality, comma, revisited. What are dreams? Why do we imagine? It was a line, and the line was between... There was this quality. There was a quality that I ascribed to art... was the quality of numinous <laughs> yeah i mean um actually i'd rather call it animus to be honest oh i was just trying to you know call back a word we discovered some time no, ago together i think i definitely want to call it animus animus yeah if i was going to give it anything i would give it the word i would give it animus there's a hostility or ill feeling no, that's not it. No. no Motivated no. to do something? Uh, try uh, and uh, 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 I'm spelling it wrong. O U S. Hold on. I might be. I might be remembering the declension of it wrong. Um. No, I want. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. No, that's why I'm. I'm thinking of it wrong. I'm thinking. Uh, uh, animus is the. Um. An, uh, ana, anima, anima is the word, and animus is a later declension of it. Um, look up, uh, look up, uh, anima, a n, uh, a n i m a. Anima. Jungian. Oh, uh, the female part of a man's personality. Or, no, probably not what you're thinking of. No, uh, the no, soul, <laughs> the soul, especially the irrational part of the soul, as distinguished from the rational mind. Cool. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I Animal. Yeah. Uh, it, well, because it's, it's it's there's a there's a Latin word, um, which I, I thought the I thought the Latin word was animus, but it might be animi. Uh, we have a nine, a nine inch nail song going in my head that's inappropriate for the children. So. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> let me see if I can. Yeah, no, I have it right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Animus, animus is 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 a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a Latin word. It's the Roman concept of the soul. Um, so animal and animation have a, the same root. I had no idea. Yeah, cool. man. Yeah, um, it all comes from this 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 concept of of the soul. And when we, you know, when I would when I was studying the classics, um, we uh, we my professor and I, because uh, I, I had basically like a one on one for an entire year because I was the only classics major left. Um, decided that we weren't ever going to translate the word animus because there it, the translation of it always felt kind of bullshit yeah yeah there's, yeah there's a few words like that yeah you know it's just there's nothing there's no definition you could give to it that feels correct almost because all of the words descended from that language right yeah mm -hmm. yeah well yeah especially especially for latin yeah you know um and so there is a quality to that which I define as art, and I would give it to it animus as distinct from something which is merely the impression of a, you know of a memory. Um, you know, it's 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 one thing to make a you know a. a, a it's one thing to make an let's, let's take an action movie, right? It's one thing to make an action movie. It's another thing to make Die Hard. Right, yeah. you know there is there is another quality that emerges in 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 something like Die Hard, or, or more recently, like say John Wick. There's a new there's a quality that comes to it, um, a part of it that makes it worth talking about. You know, it it is it becomes no longer a question of authorial intent but of audience but of audience uh inference right 
And so when I said earlier that, you know, I think that preference is, is, is at the heart of imagination and is, and is, you know, why it's important, why I wanted to talk about aesthetics. Because I think preference is how you draw out, how you draw something out of, 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 of something which has been given that quality of animus. Um, you know, when Lucas created Star Wars, Star Wars has an animus. There is something to it which is greater than itself. It is far yeah, you can tell from the lines <laughs> that that were formed outside the theater. Yeah, yeah. You know, there was there is something well beyond what you know. And I, I, I actually we talked about this uh, last week too. Um, you know, it is everyone quotes. George Lucas when they say that the film is based on the hero's journey. But that's all fucking bullshit, man. <laughs> that is Lucas oh. that is George Lucas revisionism. Ah. Huh? Interesting. Yeah. The, the film Star Wars is based on two things. It is based on two things. It is based on samurai movies, specifically um um uh, not uh, uh, Seven Samurai. It is specifically based on samurai movies and specifically Seven Samurai by uh, a director who I... Kurosawa. Kurosawa, yeah. It's it's specifically Kurosawa and um, John Wayne Westerns. That is what Star Wars is based on. It is those two things explicitly. Um, with Buck... Ro with Also with Buck Rogers. Um, the Buck Rogers actually really shouldn't be forgotten because it is... Give it as a flavor. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. those two things, but it Buck Rogers. Originally, Lucas had actually wanted to make a Buck Rogers movie, and nobody that I knew. Yeah. yeah, and so, but he, because he couldn't do that, he was like, "Okay, well, what else do I like? I like Kurosawa, and I like, you know, westerns." Yeah, All Flash that. Gordon too, right? Yeah. Um, I actually think Flash Gordon was a little later. Uh, Flash Gordon's been around since like the '30s. Or no, something, I'm, but yeah, I'm sorry. Maybe he didn't um, know about it. Yeah. No, Buck Rogers is the later one. Flash. getting my, oh, my years no mixed worries. up. Um, You're familiar with the term zeitgeist? Yes, I am, yes. Maybe something similar. Not exactly, but it's in the, in the realm of the thing that you're thinking of. Mm. Um, well, I mean, that, yes, I mean, that's, I, I think, I think zeitgeist is a, is a, is a, is a good, you know, um, not an, yeah, actually, analogy, I think, is the right word. I think zeitgeist is a good analogy for the thing that I'm talking about, because the thing that I'm talking about is very difficult to talk about. <laughs> It's very ethereal and ephemeral and hard to to you know grasp in your hand and look at and examine. Um, you know, the, to, to jump back on the Star Wars thing, like Star Wars is based on some very ex you know some very explicit properties. You know, it's very obviously Seven Samurai, right? I mean, everyone they that, all the Jedi are fucking dressed like Seven Samurai. You know, with the tunics and the the katana like lightsabers. Um, I, I haven't seen the movie American Gods. Um... But it sounds like it, these sorts of things would have their own god. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the most TV show, the most, uh, the most powerful gods. If I had to give them, uh, you know, labels. Um, yeah. And we're in the business. Of they god have the anything. they have the most they have the most people yeah. to to feed off of. Yeah. You know, I I th I you know I think they're probably some of the oldest. You know. Um, you know, since there were, I mean, fuck. I mean, it's just, it's just Sandman, right? Storytelling, yeah. It's, it's, you know. The story of the nature of story is mm -hmm. told through a, a bunch of short short stories that tell one giant story about, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's the know. god of story. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes, exactly. You know, I, you know, I think Lord Morpheus is probably the closest thing to a god that might exist. Um, you know. Nice. We, you know, like exterior, exterior to our conversations about gods that actually are very plausible and terrifying. You know, if there was one that I was more inclined to believe besides that, it'd probably be Morpheus. I believe I've actually prayed to Morpheus before, specifically when I had a cat that was dying. I prayed for Morpheus to to take that cat into I, the dream world. I uh, I've definitely played. I mean, I you know, I, I there are there have been times when I've been you know I've been writing where I'll, I'll pray to the muses. You know, I mean, My wife often thanks Farlongan, another fictional god. 
<laughs> well, D&D God. I mean, you know, uh, uh, let's let's get blasphemous for a second, as we are often one to do. I mean, are, <laughs> nice. Are, are, now are, you're talking. Are not the gods fictional unto themselves? Are they all not some construction of fiction? And yet, do they yeah. not have exceptional, phenomenal power? You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, we created them in our image, and, and then and then gave them superpowers. And, 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 and that is because <laughs> these stories take onto themselves these qualities which are greater than that which was originally intended. Why the hell do you think the Bible is such a controversial piece of work? Because the damn thing can be interpreted six ways to Sunday. You know, I you know I I am. I am not a faithful member of any of the of any of those religions. However, uh, I have I have quite a lot of respect for for their holy texts. Um, I surprised everybody my senior year of high school when somebody had, as a as, quote unquote as a joke, they had bought a Book of Mormon, you know, and said, "Haha, what a funny thing!" and tried to like leave it as a prop um, in the arts wing. And I, I took it because I actually think that that's one of my few lines where I'm like, "Yeah, but maybe not." Um, you know, whatever you think of the religion, and you should think many very silly, silly, silly things about the religion, the book itself has a tremendous amount of power and should not be fucked with. Um, you know, that is that that thing has enough story power, that story has enough life to it, that it has created a religion of many tens of millions of people. It's the fastest growing religion in the world, for God's sake. You know? I tried to read it once. It, uh... It was too much for me. It's, like it was too, it was incomprehensible to me because of <laughs> its Panama was so big. I mean, it is, it is, it is a. I, 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 I still have that copy of the Book Mormon, and it. I mean, it's a, it's a wacky story, man. <laughs> it is, it is really out there. But I mean, the kid was like sixteen or seventeen when he wrote it, so you know, no surprise. Um, I didn't know that actually. I didn't know he was that young. Yeah, Joseph Smith was a kid. You know, it's why it's so fucking crazy. You know, but I, I think if Joseph Smith had been born in, you know, the 1960s, he would have been one of the greatest science fiction authors of his generation. You know? Like another religion. Oh, sorry. <laughs> he, wasn't he wasn't that good. Well, he well I mean, all, that's, actually, the most, but, that's the most yeah. frustrating thing about the Scientologists is that uh, L. Ron, like, like, like Scientology, broadly speaking, is just fucked up Mormonism, you know, like. It's got a lot of the same elements to it, just, you know, with different, with yeah. different, you know. In the same way that Star Wars is a samurai film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's, like, still, yeah. it's know, just been given the space opera do-over. It's been given this other paint job, but it's still, you know, they filed the serial numbers off, but it's still pretty clearly that other thing. Um, you know. Uh, you ever read A Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert Heinlein? Uh, have not. It's been on my reading list for an age and a half. Yeah, uh, there's a rumor that the two of them sort of talked about inventing religions. And, oh, that, I yeah. I have heard that. I I I. I'll be honest. I do tend to think that's true because that does sound like a thing that Highland would like dare somebody to do. You know, yeah. like that sounds yeah. correct. He probably regretted the fuck out of it afterwards. Didn't oh, realize yeah. he was going to take it quite so far. But yeah. Well, I mean, if you're <laughs> Ron Hubbard, of course you take it that far. <laughs> It's a whack job. Um, I mean, before the Scientology thing, but um, what was my point to all that? The point to all that was that you know I was trying to list off stories that had this quality of animus, which gave to them the ability for preference to 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 invade, right? Um, you know, let's take a really recent thing that I you know I think is a you know a beautiful piece of art. Um, Bo Burnham's most recent stand-up special. Uh, inside, which we did an episode of the podcast on uh, a couple months ago, um, is a wonderful piece of art. Um, and the reason why it is such a wonderful piece of art is that so much can be taken out of that beyond what Burnham intended. Yeah. I finally finished uh, The Good Place and had yeah. that feeling during the last couple of episodes. Like, yeah. this is so good, it feels surreal. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Yeah. You, know, you 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 hit that moment. You know you hit that mark. That moment where you see something that is greater than what it presents itself as. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah. And greater than the sum of its parts is a philosophy idea. Mm -hmm. um, damn it! There's a word for it. Um, I'll have to find it at some point. It might come back. 
in this discussion. I'll make some notes. Sorry. No, nah, it's all right. I'm attempting to... I got a new splint. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, I broke my finger this weekend. Uh, and I got a new splint today from the orthopedic doctor, and so I'm actually testing it out now to see if I can type. Uh, a little bit. Uh, I mean, just having the bigger splint away. So. Uh, let's see what we got. Uh, synergistic is what I got. Yeah, not the one I learned from my philosophy professor, but there's a bunch. Um, it actually comes from Aristotle, apparently. Oh. He just said the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Apparently talking about it, fucking everything. So there you go. <laughs> well, that would be Aristotle for you. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I do think that that's the... That is the point at which a piece of art... becomes art that's when it crosses over and I think one of the things that is you know one of the great things that is required for that is for it to be able to have a preference exterior to that of its creator um, you know uh, we uh, I've talked at ad nauseum about how I feel about the Star Wars sequel films, um, you know. But one of my you know one of my uh, my my dirty little little secrets is that like, you know, I don't hate the Last Jedi. I think it's fine. Um, you know, my real you know I I have lots of gripes with it. I think it's a very flawed movie. But what I find so fascinating about that film is the monumental reaction that it received you know I, nobody fucking talks about the force awakens anymore because nothing happens in the force awakens and nobody's nobody talked about rise of skywalker when it was out because it was bewildering people still fucking talk about the last jedi love it or hate it and people love it and hate it and they mm. talk about it ad you know forever and ever and ever and ever and I think one of the big reasons for that is that the film is much, much, much larger than what it is. You know, just based on some of the shit that my Raylo friend has sent me. And he sent me stuff for years talking about all the things that he drew out of it. And I used to, you know, I used to argue with him about it. Because I said, look, all those things you're talking about also could be X, Y, and Z other thing. And the fact that we were able to have that discussion is because there was a quality to that film which made it grander than, than, than what it initially presented. Again, not saying that it's not a very flawed movie, uh, or even that it's a very good movie. Uh, I, you know, I, it's, it's fine. <laughs> it's maybe a yeah, I mean, so much stuff for next week, but I don't want to spoil any of it gonna save it but i'm writing it down so oh, yeah. next week's next week's gonna be intense um but you know to even get to that conversation we you know it's it's important for us to be able to examine to be able to examine our preferences right to be able to to understand that you know that framework and the, and the thing that was really important for me to get to tonight was the the distinction between the how and the why we know the how. The how is brain chemicals do X, Y, and Z, and your evolutionary biology is A, B, C, and you put all those things together and you get a fucking, you know, you get a preference. Well, that's not a why. That, that, that doesn't explain the why of why do I have this feeling. It's not, a, it's not even a what, right? Yeah. You know. Two people can have nearly identical experiences <clears throat> and have wildly different responses to them. Yeah. It's... And and you know this is and this is this is a topic too which can very easily fall prey to the sharpened blade of Newton's flaming laser sword. Um, one of the great examples of that is, uh, you know, two people might perceive the color blue as radically different things. You know, I might see blue and you might see pink, but we both refer to that thing as blue, right? And there's no no possible way for us to know. Um, and it's basically pointless to 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 talk about because it is impossible for us to know. Um, so I guess why I got so sort of, you know when I when I started to get really deflated when you were <laughs> postulating that it's just simply impossible to, to try to get a why is that it immediately you know it falls upon the sword of Newton 
and we have to just move on um, because it can very it can very very easily slip onto that place um, because it you know it, it it walks these questions of what and why walk next to the laser sword um, you know, can they, I can I say that as far as I'm concerned aesthetics defeats Newton's flaming laser sword completely really mm-hmm. elaborate because Newton's flaming laser sword is about if I can't tell. Um, if, if I so Newton's flaming laser sword is if there's if if I can't tell if there's no consequence to whether something is A or B, then you, there's no need to talk about whether it's A or B or mm-hmm. to discover whether it's A or B. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I have a I have a preference. I enjoy finding out. I enjoy searching mm. for the the answer. Right, mm-hmm. that is a difference. Right, the different that that is a discernible difference. Is that I want to go looking. I enjoy the search, even if I never find. That makes it such that searching is better than not searching. Um, Boom! I'm good with that. I'm good with that. I like that. I'm good. I like that. That's I. You know that is maybe that's why aesthetics is so comfortable sitting next to the laser sword because it's got an impenetrable shield. <laughs> you know Newton. Newton can't cut through aesthetics because aesthetics is all about preference. But to be honest, I mean that 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 I I, I think just just strengthens my overall feeling that preference is at the heart of all this. You know that you don't get. You don't get George Lucas dreaming up Star Wars without his preference for uh, Kurosawa and you know John Wayne and Buck Rogers and. Um, what was the other one? It's Buck Rogers. Um, Flash Gordon. Flash Gordon. Buck Rogers. Flash Gordon. Um, Flash Gordon I actually think is the more important one of those two as far as the science fiction aesthetic is concerned, but. Um, it was a movie I love simply because I had HBO when I was 14 and there was only so many movies on it so they played that thing over and over and over again so I've seen it a hundred times or so uh, no that came later but I love The Rocketeer for sure no no um, Flash Gordon oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you know that movie yes, that yeah, they make fun of in Ted with, but the, yeah. with the Queen soundtrack yes yeah yeah I almost started singing. Don't don't get me started. It'd be bad. <laughs> uh, I, I jumped I jumped to the Rocketeer because his outfit is based off of uh, Flash. Um, I love that movie just because I was in love with Jennifer Connelly since Labyrinth. But sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, another story. Uh, goddamn, um, uh, 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 Paul Paul Bettany who plays the Vision um, was also yeah. in love with Jennifer Connelly as a kid, uh, and he worked with her on one on like one project. And then 9-11 happened, and he called her and said, hey, I've been in love with you since I was a kid. Can I come see you? And now they've been Fucking married for bastard. 20 years. They've been married oh, for sorry. 20 years. <laughs> she's still she still got it. But, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen a picture of her lately, but she's doing fine. Yeah. She's old like me. Um, well, I mean, there's your preference, right? Yeah. You have a, you have a preference for Jennifer Connelly. Yeah, yeah. There's no good reason for me to be heterosexual. I just woefully am. Uh, aesthetics is... Aesthetics is exhausting. <laughs> uh, art is exhausting. Art is exhausting. Yeah, creating it. it I think, you know, not to get too metaphysical on you, but there's spirit involved and your soul and some whatever the hell that means is involved well I, that's... you have to give pieces of yourself away that's gonna be fucking exhausting that's why that's why i group aesthetics under metaphysics you know i i really think aesthetics is a branch of metaphysics um i think both I, idealistically and materialistically is aesthetics is metaphysics um yeah, I think my metaphysics is too cold and limited and and simplistic. Yeah, uh, but I'm starting to get I'm getting there with you. Metaphysics <laughs> metaphysics governs the universe, man. It's the heart of everything. It's all under, you know, that's the that's that's my uh, you know, that's my primary sphere of magic, right? I, I used to teach a lesson on why art was important to physics. So, 
It's going to be fun next week. Mm. Some of that will come back. Um, all right, I so still give hard assignments to my physics kids. So, all right. So where does this where does this leave us? Let me try to let me try to sift through everything. Because um, you know, because it, it, it's a difficult conversation. Um, we have different experiences, mm -hmm. and we respond to those experiences differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and oh. Oh, I, I've, I've now, I've, I've, I've pieced together what my original point was, for all of oh, cool. all of this section. Um, that question of the why. Um, my answer to the why is 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 imagination. I, I think that that's that's your why. Um, the how is the you know the the, the, the you know the, the brain chemicals. Um, the what and the the what and the why are the imaginative property, the creative property. Well, we respond differently to the similar experiences because we have vastly different imaginations. Yes. Yes. I buy that. Yeah, that's my, that's my why. Um, now that's a, does that, you know, does that provide us with a, you know, a, a perfect answer to everything? Not even, not even close. We haven't defined imagination yet. But we haven't defined imagination yet. And the whole point of this, I mean, that's, but that's the whole point of this series, is that we're trying to get into this concept of imagination, this quality of creativity, that that's what we're digging into here over, you know, over the next couple of weeks. Understand um, both its spirit and its function. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, this, this thing which is greater than all of us, which we all share. You know, I, 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 I fundamentally disagree with the idea that someone doesn't have an imagination. Everybody has an imagination. Everybody has the capacity to be creative. Yeah, yeah, just different, different. Um, you know, it's just not an on-off thing. There's a more or less, right? You know, yeah. Well, I, I don't even. I don't even know that it's that. I think it's. I think there's a. You know, there's a real preferential quality difference to it. You know, like my imagination. Ex, you know, explodes in the realms of fantasy and fancy. Right. You know, I. I, I, I write stories and I, I you know I, I and I, I, I play act you know and I, I run role playing games and you know you, if you are on the couch and you realize your stomach starts to rumble you have to imagine all of the possible things that you can eat mm -hmm. and how you were going to and how you were going to get them and you know what the next steps are and like yeah 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 you can't function let's, you would be comatose without imagination let's say that you work at an office and your job is processing people's let's say you're a tax accountant you process taxes your job is to imagine all of the different ways that people might have fucked up their taxes or gotten their taxes right or might have creative ways of hiding tax money or creative ways of of making sure their taxes are paid up front you know like they're they're is an imaginative quality to that. You're just imagining things which are, you know, they're not the glitzy, glamorous wizards in space. But that's still imagination. It requires a kind of imagination that I don't, well, actually, I have a little bit of it, but I'm certainly not a tax accountant, right? I couldn't be a tax accountant. I don't yeah. have, <laughs> oh, I don't have mathematical imagination, right? I just, I, I got started suddenly excited because I, I want to talk about um, higher mathematics for a second abstract mathematics you remember alana alana <clears throat> alana haslam yes yeah i was just at my fourth of july party and my aunt was telling me that she her husband works with alana's dad and they had like talked about me and, uh, and whatnot and she's getting her phd in math that girl is probably the smartest human being i've ever met oh my god that girl is fucking brilliant uh i gave her a um uh a graduate level math book for her graduation. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she flipped for that. I mean, I remember, yeah. I remember the last time I saw her, I because I had watched a, like an uh, an advanced mathematics video on YouTube, and they had brought up this concept of, of octonian numbers, and I was just like, "Hey, what what is that?" And she got so excited and began to imagine all of the possibilities of, of octonians. You know, um, you see her? Yeah, I mean, she she okay, so. My one of my best friends from early high school uh, is the 
Actually, no, I take that back. I'm also friends with... So I'm, I'm friends with Peter... Do you know, do you know Peter Hyde? Is that her boyfriend? Yeah, that's her boyfriend. Um... You know, so I, you know, I was, I was good friends with, with, with Peter, and my best friend from high school was his brother, um, his, not his brother, his sister. She was, she's, he's her brother. I'm friends with that, so I'm friends with the Hyde family, and so I see them sometimes, and I see Alana when I see Peter, and I was also, you know, friends with Alana because she did some theater stuff sometimes. So like, I, you know, I knew yeah. Alana. Um, he was in a time travel class with yeah, us, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I ran, you know, I ran into her when I was at the Hyde's one time, and so I asked her about this, you know, this Octonian thing, and she, you know, she imagined for me all of these crazy numerical things, you know. Um, and and to you know, a question in the chat, um, from uh, Katie Kins, who also does great podcasts. You should go check her out. Uh, uh, K i t i e e k i n s s. Um. She has asking about, uh, you know, she just wants to clarify, you know, is it imagination when you're taught what to expect in a certain field? Yes. Let me give you a great counterexample to that. Um, I am an artist. I have been taught how to art, right? There are things that, there are things and structures that you are taught uh, when you learn how to write. They are not numbers and they are not things that you memorize from tables, for example, but they are still rules and guidelines that you are taught how to how to interact with. The imagination arises from your ability to take those guidelines and transform them into something else. You know, I can understand the guidelines involved in taxes. There are rules and regulations that do exist that I can Google whenever I want. Where the imaginative, imagine, the imaginative quality comes in is my ability to take, interpret, and then utilize those rules. Here's a simple example. When I do a very simple algebra problem, I, I'm very visual, so I imagine moving things from one side of the equation to the other. My brain li you know, literally creates a visual where I, I move that 2x over there and that 3x back there. And so it's not just memory. I'm remembering how to imagine it, but, but I'm using my imagination. In it a is, limited way. It is your memory that gives you the rules. It is your imagination that gives you the... the. Think of Legos. Like yeah. if your memory is yeah. the, each of the block, are the blocks, you build whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, actually, Legos is a great... That's a great example. <laughs> you know? Best imaginative toy ever. The rule... Uh, hey, yeah. side point. Ooh. It is very important to me, next time you see Alana Haslam, that you let her know that I, um, uh, that I say hello. Yeah. I think fondly of her. Um, you know how sometimes teachers change the lives of students. Oh, yeah. She's a student who changed my life and the way I teach and, and added a whole bunch of good things to me. So I, I hope she's doing very, very well. Uh, yeah, as far as I know, Super yeah. proud of her. Uh, I think I'm seeing yeah. her later this summer. I Assuming assuming that she's going to be uh, at... Um, uh, there's there's a thing happening this summer. So assuming she's going to be there, which she, you know, I assume she will be. I'll, I'll make sure to... Say what did everybody call her? Uh, it was some sort of bundle of sunshine or something like that. Oh yeah, I mean she was a ray of sunshine. I mean that girl was just so goddamn positive. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was always a little nice, especially you know in, in the middle of like a stressful work week, and then you'd, you'd come in and she'd just be like, "Hi guys, but everything's fine." Voice like an angel too. I mean, like absolutely beautiful singing voice. Um. She's not watching this show, but Alana, you're great out in the ether somewhere. Uh, um, uh, but that's you know. But I, 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 you know, I, I, uh, where was I? Getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah, way way ahead of ourselves. Um, all of this derives from our ability to have preference, and preference comes, you know, preferences are. You know, it is the the bread and uh, and butter of of how we make our decisions. I would here's, here's a bold um, claim. Mm. Our varied configuration of preferences mm. is what makes us different from each other. Yeah, I, I can. It is the that. heart of our personality. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's. I think that's a, a bold claim, but a true. I think that's. I think that's true. Um, I can think of. Let me. Let me try to devil's advocate. If we all had yeah. exactly the same preferences, we would be the same people. Even like. A, like a desperately trying to attempt to think of like a, a counterpoint but I, yeah i mean like what how more i mean we could have different say, names you know? i guess and yeah. you know uh, but and they even look different because you know that that matters but i'm talking about the 
the internal you, you know, the person, yeah. the personality you. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very much with you, and I can, I really can find no fault with that. Um, I think because that's, you know, it's been the, it's been the crux of my, <laughs> my argument tonight. Um, you know, uh, that, and yeah, so that's, that's why it's, you know, that's why aesthetics is important. That's why it's important. You were a book in the library of Babel, but instead of having letters, you have preferences. Yes. Whoa. Yes. Yeah. Whoa. You know. People are going to think I smoke pot, but I don't. You don't. You don't. Maybe <laughs> someday. Uh, I, I tried it in college. It made me feel terrible. Holy. Made me feel like, like I was dying, like I had some sort of neurological disorder. Like, actually, I think I might even be allergic to it. That's how negative the experience was. We... <laughs> There's a there's a kind of weed that Hal keeps trying to trying to get me to smoke called philosopher weed. Would you be would you would you would you be willing to try a little bit? Um, would ask him if it works as an edible. Uh, I think so. Right. That could be fun. He just keeps he keeps calling it that. I'm like I've never actually used because the the one time I actually smoked it, I just got like happy and then I went to bed. <laughs> so I've never actually got to use it and actually use it for what it supposedly is for. <laughs> um. Aesthetics, the importance of aesthetics. Speaking of aesthetics and shrooms, mushrooms are the only food I don't eat. Not because I don't like the taste of them, but because they wig me out. Because they are decomposers. And I have a death sort of aversion. That's fascinating. <laughs> I mean, I... I know I, I I'll eat a mushroom. You know, I tend to be I tend to be neutral on, on fungi because they are just frequently bland. You know, I have no real opinion on them as far as decomposers are concerned. I am fairly convinced of the conspiracy theory that psilocybin and other related psychedelic mushrooms might actually be conscious in the wild, but um... Oh, have you watched Star Trek Discovery? I have. That's sort of the whole premise, yeah. I don't like it. Yeah, it's fine. It's, a, it's, a, it's more than a little bit, like, bugging out there. Yeah. I gotta I gotta give Discovery another chance. I, I like, I... But I've only know. seen the first two seasons, I think. Yeah. I and I also don't super I also don't super like Star Trek Voyager, so this some, I don't have to like all Star Trek. Yeah, I didn't get very far into Voyager. This Voyager that much for some reason. You know, I think that's my problem with Discovery, is that it's got the Voyager issue of just like what what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. Is They're this... disassociated from their society. And it's the society that makes it most fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's human evolved sociology, really. That is is fascinating about Star Trek. Yeah, and you know, it's like, and 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 you know, we've already done the disassociation thing, right? Like we did it in TOS. It's the whole premise of the original series that it's people going and exploring. Why would we keep doing the going and exploring thing? You know, that's that's why DS Nine is so fucking good. Is that DS Nine get uh, you know after after TNG is like, all right, well, we've done the exploratory stuff. Why don't we do straight society? Yeah. You know? Well, with TOS, it was our first introduction yeah. to it, and so it was all fascinating because we imagined the detail mm -hmm. rather than we're given the detail, right? Yeah. But well, then Next Generation gave us the detail, and we're like, wow, fucking mm -hmm. cool. Well, yeah. I, and, and even some of the worst Next Gen stuff is just the TOS stuff redone. And then and then when you get to Voyager, it's just, all right, we're just doing TNG now. And I guess that's my problem with Discovery. So by the time we get to Discovery, we're just doing Voyager, which is just doing Next Gen, which is just doing TOS. Um, and on that note, Enterprise is way too maligned. Enterprise is fine. I think people give Enterprise too much shit. It's you know, it's uh, it's a it's a you know, it's a it's a dis it's a discernibly different take. You know, we're seeing how human society evolves into its into its excellence, and I think that's very interesting. Did something different, but eh, whatever. People are gonna hate. <laughs> No, actually, not whatever. It's very important that we talk about this stuff because this is literally aesthetics. Yeah. Hold on. Our random tangents tonight actually matter a lot. Why do I keep dismissing yeah. them? They're very important. Oh, I don't go to movies because I want a good, a good story. I go to movies because I want my imagination inspired. Some of my favorite movies are terrible, terrible, terribly written and terrible stories, and I love them because they they give me a platform that my imagination runs wild with. Give me uh, give me an example of a bad movie that you really like. Um, Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon. Oh, really? 
my one of my favorite movies, and it's it's objectively terrible. Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it I want, but I imagine myself as this guy, right? And I imagine myself, you know, not being less awkward and being in more cool situations and having those powers and stuff, right? That is for sure. Yeah, there, there's a little correlation between how good a movie is and how much I like it. But, but the difference is, I go to a movie to have my imagination fueled. Mm. I get cool special effects that my brain can run with, right? Mm-hmm. And build off of, and they, they give me build, they give me Legos with which to build. It's a, I get a bucket full of Legos every time I go. And it's, even if even if what they are made into was crap, I can pull it apart and make something else of my own. Mm. I'm a Lego. I'm a Lego vor. Nom nom nom. We need, I wonder what the there should be a word for like building block of imagine of imagination, like the smallest piece. Well, I mean, um, <laughs> why don't we? Uh, why don't we? Why don't we? Now I'm getting people in the chat who are saying that they have. I, I'm going to state this again. I will state it until the day I die. There is no such thing as someone with a lack of imagination. It's just a thing that you think because your imagination is programmed in a different way than society has told you that imagination is. We grow up expecting that imagination is simply our ability to, like, you know, create stories about freaking, uh, you know, lasers and, and robots and wizards and, and, and you know, like, it's... Yeah. it's that's, imagination doesn't have to be outlandish. It, that's yeah. that's not what imagination is. That is a certain kind of imagination, but that's if you not can read up. If you are functionally literate, you have a strong imagination. Yeah, man. Reading is all about imagination. If you can, I mean, I really, I really, and truly, I, I believe this with whole sincerity. If you can look at a table of statistics and imagine what those statistics represent. You have an imagination. Your imagination is just geared and operates on a different wavelength. You know, like, if you love reading, you have an imagination. You can imagine the stuff that comes out of it. Just because you can't write your own stories, that doesn't mean that you have a lack of imagination. And it's, 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 it's finally important to me that we defeat this idea that imagination has to be this quality that, you know, that Matt, you and I share. Um, you know. Brings up an interesting question. Um, what's the difference between? We'll talk about it later. The difference between generative imagination, imagination that creates things. Uh, I mean, I guess it all does generate. Like, um, and put a pin in that because we're going to talk about that. Responsive, in the dream. yeah. That's going to be the dream episode in a in a in a lot. Uh, <laughs> cool. cool. That that dream uh, question is very important. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, I have dreamed movies, you know what I mean? Like, Oh my god. Maybe they were long or short, but entire stories. My brain is very story-oriented, but... I have my own Jurassic Park that I... I, I I've dreamt a co I haven't dreamt it in years, but no, I still remember a lot of the broad details. You know, I have my own version of Jurassic Park that I can, you know, I could go and dream. Um, I think some animals might even have imagination. We'll talk about that, too. Ravens. <laughs> Cats, you know, they imagine that that motion is a mouse, mm -hmm. right? You know, it's just a different kind and maybe limited. You know, rudimentary, but it's still imagination. You know, it's they the dream, to... right? Yeah. Dogs maybe any dream. animal that dreams, yeah. You know, we know that dogs dream. Do all brains dream? Awesome question. Put that mm. down. Hmm. Oh, oh, yeah. Definitely put a pin in that because there's some interesting stuff that comes up with uh, what a brain actually is. Um, yeah, I'm reading this. I'm reading this book about these uh, like advanced octopus guys, and they sort of have yeah. two different kinds of brain: ones that is core, and one that is they call the reach, which is sort of in their arms. Very cool. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's you know that seems true of octopi. You know, they have, yeah, yeah. They have exterior brains. But uh, these have been like this has been like brought to the next level. You know, where they're really distinct and interesting. It has an effect on the story in some interesting ways. Yeah. Here's an aesthetic preference. I hate octopuses. <laughs> I hate them. They like they they don't hate you, so it's okay. Mm, I don't. They are planning that. your demise, but <laughs> in, in the most loving fashion possible. Ugh. Oh, oh, squid are even worse. Ah, oh, squid don't even count. No, squid are squid are vile, vile creatures. Squid are ghetto octopi. <laughs> 
octopi wannabe. Squid need to be eradicated from the face of the earth. My favorite article I saw the headline for recently was that we need to stop romanticizing octopi. They're food. <laughs> and I've never been so happy. I mean, in terms of, in terms of hate... I hate the squids the most, and then octopi, and then cuttlefish. Um, and the cuttlefish is last, if only because, like... And I, I, let's be clear, I hate them because I used to really love them. Like, I was fascinated by, by these creatures. <laughs> um, and now I know too much about them, and they're fucking terrifying. It yeah. gives me Age of Ultron flashbacks. Cuttlefish! Oh, terrifying. <laughs> they are, man. I mean, cuttlefish fucking camouflage themselves. You know, but I, I still... Do, there is a part of me that's still always really, real really love the cuttlefish <laughs> just because like it's such a fascinating creature and they're so clearly sentient you know like that's a that's a smart animal uh, which is why they need to be eradicated because they are monsters and I will not have them in the same planet as me I do not accept <laughs> holy them. shit dude have you ever seen that fucking video with the colossal squid that got caught off the coast of Denmark ah uh, yes ugh. Yep. Ugh. monstrous I just I just didn't know you were so, you know, hegemonic or whatever. Oh my god, no. These things need to be eradicated. They are just fucking the worst. Take a dark side point. <laughs> I will. I'll happily take a dark side point for this <laughs> shit. This is very much fucking worth it. Uh, I will not show... I will. I will. I am not going to show the giant Denmark squid on stream because that shit scares the shit out of me. I forgot to put the chat up tonight. Oh well. The chat? I learned how to put the chat onto the actual stream uh, so that I could... What? Yeah, yeah. Mind blown. It's like one of the most basic things to learn on Twitch. It just took me months to bother, like, trying to figure it out. I guess we have to go back to the beginning of the series and start over now. I guess we do. We'll have to do the whole thing over again. I'm fine with that. We'll relearn everything, test our limit, you know, test our limits and shit. I really can't look at them. It's only been, like, 50 hours of us gabbing. Uh, yeah, um... Probably I, closer to 30, I'd say. This is right. 25, so it's about 30 hours. Just still not nothing, you know, but... Uh, but here's, you know, here's here's a great here's a great thing, you know, with the aesthetics, right? Let me let me tell you why why they bother me so much. I'm getting an audience, I love it. There is a way that they move. That twisting, writhing, floating quality to them. You know, that they, they don't just, like, like a fish swims through the air, right? You know, the way that a fish moves isn't the way that we move. But the creature, you know, it, it, the way that it moves has a logic to it, right? You know, I look at a fish and I say, well, there's the tail, and the tail wags back and forth, and that's like a motor. That's a thing that I can do in the water, right? When okay. I see a goddamn octopus crawling its way across the water, I'm like, what the fuck is that thing? The little cloud animal. It's not, beautiful. That's no, no, it's wrong. <laughs> it's alien and wrong. I, it just, that, that's that not is a just, way. just racist. It I thought is, we covered it, this. It we is, covered this. It is. It you, is. You cannot. Yeah. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is speciesist in the fullest sense of the word, and I'm very proud of it. I like these things are monsters. Well, you are out of my eclipse phase game officially. <laughs> Aww. Uh, as there are, are like octopi that have been uplifted and you can actually have your consciousness downloaded into one of the bodies I mean like I'll play in the game it'll just you know like it'll make me a little you just won't out. be an octopus and you'll just yeah. be racist to all the yeah, octopus I'll players. just be really racist toward the octopus people <laughs> and I'll just like I'll make it a character trait alright you're back in Oh, see, <laughs> yeah, Call of Cthulhu. Well, yeah, see, I've run Call. Of, see, but that's the thing is that here's, but here's, here's actually, this is why it's really important too, right? Let me, I'm describing to you in these, you know, and you can, I think you can fucking hear it in my voice, like how uncomfortable I am with them, right? That's what makes it perfect for Cthulhu. I wrote, uh, I mean, I just, I just finished running some Cthulhu. Um, though I mostly ran like Werewolf Cthulhu, so, um, you know, I, I Lovecraft has done other things besides, besides, uh, you know, Cthulhu himself, but. Um, I wrote a short, I'm like three quarters of the way through a short story. I got kind of sidetracked. Um, but last year I was writing a story called Deepest Darkest Depths, um, about a, uh, you know, the first submersible that's going to actually like map the floor of, you know, the, the, not just the floor of the ocean, but like the wholeness of the ocean. It's, it's so, it's like, a, you know, it's, it's an enterprise, right? Its job is to explore the ocean and map all of its depths. 
you know, not just, you know, image, you know, not just by images, but we're actually going to go down and look at the things and explore the depths and what creatures live where. Um, That's it. Try to develop some understanding. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's about the science exploration vessel. And there is this scene in the, in the, in the story where the ship gets attacked by a, 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 a giant octopus. Um, that sounds I say, familiar. Yeah, you know, when I, I say read that book. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just this horrible. Well, I think I describe it as being like albino. Like it's, it's this monstrous thing, and everybody I've given that scene to has told me how fucking creepy it is. My fear, my preference, you know, my my disgust at cephalopods allows me to imagine. In the fullness of its its cre you know of its creation, a creature which can terrify people who are not normally terrified of these kinds of creatures. I know how to describe it in this certain way and give you my frame of reference because I have such a strong feeling, a, such a strong preference about this this creature. It brings up an interesting question about the, what we were talking about before about um, people who who create and don't create with their Legos. Mm. You know, I, it's about motivation, mm. right? Um, those who have no reason to build a fire truck from their Legos never will. Mm -hmm. Or to you know, if you just build things that are practical, and they, like oh, you've got some Legos, so you build some practical things that you can use, but you don't build something just for the pure. Uh, well, you just don't have the motivation. We do maybe we do something for the pure joy of it, but if it doesn't bring you that joy, or you don't know that it's going to bring you that joy, you're not motivated to do it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So I think we'll have to look at the motivation for how to use the imagination, and that might be some difference between people. I think I mean that's that's the that's the I mean, that's our that's our final episode, right? That's that's why you know it's the why question. Um. Uh, yeah, there's a. As you all can see, there's a lot that we're going to be talking about over the next six weeks. Um, I almost got enough points to force myself to be a guest. <laughs> so many, I guess, maybe I have enough. I have 17,000. Uh, no, I need 20,000. I'm getting there. You're getting there. 3,000 more, and I'll just literally, I'll just, we'll just literally call you. Reminder, it's the only one of our custom uh, channel point things which is still up there, because I, I created some, and then I decided that their point values were weird, and then I just never got around to working on it again. I'm busy. Like I said, I only just recently figured out how to put chat on the stream, and I already forgot to do it tonight. <laughs> You're fired. Uh, I've lost my own show. I have 60,000 points. I, have, I bow to your greatness. She's at every fucking episode. She doesn't have 60,000 points and like... You've so. got enough to be on the show a lot. I want to hear her talk. Three episodes. <laughs> <laughs> and to be clear, to be clear, I mean, I will actually also just call you as a joke. Uh, uh, like, um, two months ago when we were, do, when we were doing Monk Coin, um, uh, I called uh, Sunny, uh, Sunny Star Blast. Everyone go check out Sunny Star Blast. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Sunny Star Blast. Um, I called him just randomly on stream because he said that he knew something about uh, how, how blockchains and shit worked. So Tim and I were like, oh, hey, come on the show. Um, so I will also just do that. <laughs> it is a, it is a, it is a, it is a, it is a common trait of this show. I'll certainly call you on a, you know, any of our programs. These are, these are totally valid, uh, these are valid points for. So, you know, if you have something that you decide you, you know, you really desperately want to say and you've got the points, fuck it. Dial us in, and we'll invite you on the episode. Um, is there a Twitch this... iPad app? Uh, yes, there is. Yeah, I might I might do some math problems on stream just to see if people show up. Even if they don't, because I'm going to be doing it anyway. I think it'll be fun. You watch. You're good at math. It's... Well, actually, that'd be a great way for you to do your uh, do your calculus stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's what oh, I'm thinking. That's another one. Right. You can, like, I, I almost breezed past it earlier, but you imagine math way better than I can. You know, you have a you have a mathematical kind of imagination. Oh, um, you know what? You know what? I'm, this is where it's what it's tangential towards. Have you heard of the theory of multiple intelligences? Yes. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's an old one. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. the, the idea of, of musical and 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 kinesthetic, and you know, there's different ways yep. of thinking. Um, you know, I I have yeah, my. Of course. I think How good the theory is is hard to say, but it's undeniable that those categories exist. Well, and yeah. and and that's that's my thing is that I I'm not sure that. 
I'm not. I'm not sure that as a theory of intelligence, it's the. I. I don't think that it's a. It's a theory of intelligence. I think it's a theory of. Um, imagination. Yeah, I think it's a theory of imagination. You know, it's yeah. a theory. It's a theory of functional interaction I, with the world. Yeah, I think imagination and intelligence. Yeah, there are different kinds of imagination. Imagination is the heart of intelligence because even if you look mm -hmm. at an IQ test, it's it's about your ability to imagine differences. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. This is why anybody who who goes around tooting their IQ horn is an is an ass because there are, <laughs> because it just says nothing about your memory it says nothing about those other kinds of imagination those generative imaginations mm. it's just a phase space imagination it's mm. the only thing it is like it's a puzzle imagination and that puzzle solving is only one very limited type of intelligence so it's a it's the it's the it's logical imagination um, and 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 you know not to not to throw a race onto everything, but this is America and race is involved in everything. Um, you know, it's also predominantly white oriented. Um, you know, the test was designed for white middle class kids. So. Yeah. Why well, I did so good? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I mean, me too. But <laughs> yeah, you know. But it's like it's 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 got you know. And also, like IQ decreases with age. So. Oh my God! That's why. Yeah. So I'm an idiot now. Ancient. <laughs> yeah, that fucking test you took when you were six. Yeah, that number is real, real static. Yep. Yeah, well done. <laughs> oh my god. Um, <laughs> I don't want to know what it is now. Ninety-six. It's ninety-six. Ninety's below average. Ouch. <laughs> hurts. That hurts. Nah, it's fine. Uh, like, I have no memory, but I have great imagination. There you go. I mean, that's it's what matters. It. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think... Coming up on the two-hour mark, and I think I've covered the broad strokes of... Um, you know, what I consider to be the foundational part of the rest of this conversation. You know, I don't think we can have this conversation about imagination if we can't have this conversation first about aesthetics, about the importance of preference. Um, yeah, I have think I, we're, we've got enough to move on for sure. Have I made? I, I, have I made that case? I hope I've made that case well. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, yeah I'm, I think I've made some good revelations to put myself in the context here. So, yeah. And this, this too, is the point at which my, you know, I, I frequently have. I think it's no secret based on the, you know, how we've talked about these things that. Uh, you know, I have some preconceptions going into all of these episodes. You know, I, I already have ideas, and you know, it's how you talk about things. You have to have some kind of idea. This is the point where we start to really leave my realm of ideas. Oh, you know, cool. I've got I've got broad strokes for a lot of the rest of this, but we are we are moving into the territory of I've got. And if you notice on the episode list, most of these are framed as questions, right? Because these are questions that I'm asking um and just for you know just for clarity's sake i'm gonna post all those questions now in the chat and uh, if you're watching on youtube youtube.com slash the white pages podcast um i'm gonna put all of these in the uh description and also probably in the comment section just so you know what's uh coming up next um but these are going to be you know, we're going to be doing these over the next six weeks, every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on our Twitch channel, uh, twitch.tv slash whitepagesentertainment. Um, and the six episodes are, we talked about them earlier, but they are uh, Aesthetics was tonight. Uh, next week we are talking about what is art. Uh, and next week we are having our uh, uh, our good friend uh, David back. Uh, and he's going to be joining us for the what is art episode. Um, and then we are going to be discussing uh, where do ideas come from? France. Uh, at, uh, and then week four, uh, we are revisiting our question, you know, our, our reality conversation. We had an episode a couple weeks ago um, called What is Real, where we just did some heavy metaphysics for an hour and a half, and that was a good time. We're going to talk about that again. Um, and David will be back was, for that. Hmm? Some imagination seasoning on there? Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Um, and David will be back for that episode. He will also be here for uh, episode five, What Are Dreams? Um, which uh, I think should be a, a nice, fun, esoteric jaunt into lots of I don't knows, but wouldn't it be cool ifs? <laughs> if anybody in the audience doesn't know David, um, you're in for a treat. He's he's a brilliant and insightful and um, genuinely awesome human being. So he uh, 
he's one he's one of my best friends from 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 childhood so it's, i'm glad that i'm glad that he's uh I'm, I'm i know he really surprised me the other night when he was like i really like doing your podcast you know if i can come back on anytime it's like well whatever you want baby girl <laughs> uh so he'll be back you know he'll be there for episodes two uh four and five uh and then episode six wrapping us all uh all of this up uh we are asking the final question why do we imagine and hopefully that episode will be a lot of if we've made some good headway i'm hoping that that episode will be a lot of us processing everything that we've talked about and creating some kind of uh summation and distillation of no. this because that is no, the that's... question that's going to be a three-minute episode. I already have the answer, so, oh, yeah. but I won't spoil it now. Come back then. Make sure you're on time because we'll be done. I know the answer. <laughs> Over. Ding. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, if you if you, uh, write that answer down, uh, yeah, and uh, down. you know, because I I wanna I just I wanna see if it's changed by the time we get there. Okay. Good. No, I'm I'm I'm, I'm curious, uh, and if and if I can get an answer, if I can get an answer to that question, and I you know I have some ideas about it, of course, but you know it's. I think it's very central. I think it is central to the human experience. Um, Dave, unfortunately, baby, David's been David's been baby girl long before you. <laughs> um, right to the couch with you. <laughs> um, but uh, that I think is going to do it for us tonight um thank you guys for, uh, thank you yes uh thank you for coming back thank you for signing on to another uh slate of episodes um Always. the uh, uh this podcast plain talk airs every wednesday night at 8 p.m eastern standard time uh also don't forget uh the white pages podcast which is the namesake of all this stuff airs at sometimes Sometimes, probably, definitely this coming Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, unless it isn't, but it probably will be here on Sunday, uh, you know, and if not, it'll be here around at some point. Uh, there's been a lot of changes because, uh, you know, as you all know, if you follow the White Pages podcast, Timmy is in San Diego uh, and, uh, you know, has left me. Uh, all by my lonesome, apart from all the other people who come and do the show. Um, but uh, to keep up with when we are streaming the White Pages podcast and all of our other programming, make sure you follow us on Twitter at pages underscore podcast. It has all of our latest news and updates and is the best way to interact with us off stream. Um, also, our YouTube channel, which I mentioned earlier, youtube.com slash the White Pages podcast, is now regularly updated with our past streams and stuff. So if you want to go back and check out some of our older episodes, things we have talked about, I am working on getting the back catalog up there as well, in addition to posting more of our newer episodes. So there will be plenty of new content to, to go and watch over there. Um, that should just about do it for us. Um, once again, thank you all very much for watching and hanging out and engaging with us um love the chat engagement it's what makes it fun doing a live show um so i hope that we will see you all next time and have a good evening everyone <laughs>